it's just like everything else. It's a more expensive game to play. When I sold records, man, you been a hundred records might cost you three hundred dollars. Hundred records might cost you three hundred dollars. Thirty bucks. Yeah, no, no, yeah, three dollars. Three dollars. Um, if you I was twelve inches, it, you know, and if you bought an uh, album, they might cost you a hundred, might cost you five hundred bucks, but you then you got another thirty days to pay for them. So you had time to to move the product and pay for it. You know, people deal with you a lot bit a lot different back then. Uh, a lot of the, a lot of the independents don't have thirty day billing, not for twenty six hundred dollars. They want you to, you know, give me at least COD 10 days at the most or COD. So, you know, the game has changed. I miss the record business, man. I really do. I miss the record business. You don't have to have a hit to make money in the record business. You don't have to have a hit. All you got to know who got the hit and what, and, and you got you know, point A to point B because record business is real funny. It's real funny. Certain people can't deal with certain people. Record distributors, uh, a, a label is not supposed to deal with the store direct. You're supposed to go through the, through the distributor. A record label is not supposed to go through to a sell to a tell directly to a store because you just bypassed the middleman. The middleman ain't gonna like that. So, the um, sometimes if you got a, most people at the record company, you can buy from the record company. And he don't care who you sell them to because it ain't his problem. I sold them to Lonzo. I, I don't follow Lonzo around and see where his records go. And it depends on who you're dealing with. Because sometimes in the record game, you when you buy records from somebody, you may not have paid them all their money. They may be a little behind. Y'all could be having a dispute while y'all uh sell them, trying to settle this dispute. You can't buy from this person until this dispute is settled. And it might not even be your fault. It could be an accounting problem, but I'm not double paying you to, uh, I'm not double paying you when I, you, know, when you owe me money. So while that, while that situation is going on, I still want to sell this record because this record is hot. I can make more money selling this record while y'all got me on hold because that's what it was. They put you on hold. And uh, meanwhile, I know a guy that can get these records. So I can keep making my money. And that's how they, the record, record uh, distributors and um, labels sometimes Will put you will put your ass on put you on a chokehold where you can't make no money. You can't get no product from us until we do this right here, until we resolve this. And, it, and sometimes it wasn't always your fault, but it means you still got to eat. So you know you I got this record over here, and you need some. I got cash. Okay, well, cool. I'm gonna come out and pick this check, and you gonna make you some money, and it, I'll make me some money. And everybody, you know, nobody really don't care. You just can't get it from people you hold to get it from. Aha. Uh -huh. All right, one more thing I want to ask about this because I'm always interested in the specifics of things back in the day. Now, we have FedEx, we have UPS, we have Amazon today, you know, and obviously it wasn't as big as it was back then. How did the shipping work? I mean, nowadays you order something and 99.999% of the time, it's going to be on your doorstep when they say it's going to be there. But was that always the case? Back then, that, was it really effective? Talk to us about the shipping aspect of stuff. That, that so. was the hardest part about the record industry. The hardest part, because you had to go to you had to go to UPS with a with a truckload of records, a van load of records. You had to get the records from the distributor, label every box, label every box, put a label, put a hand printed label on the box, every box. Then you had to mark the box. How how every boxes you send in. You had to put on there one of 10, two of 10, whatever, whatever the situation was. And back then, UPS would collect for you. They would collect COD. So you dropped them off at the record distributor. You had to, you had to get this dude a check or cash. And if your check bounced, they put your ass on cash only. True story. So you had to wait, uh, you had to wait till the, the driver would get back to the station, count out, and then they would send you send you a check. But having to go to ship the records, do especially during the holidays, oh my God. Because UPS would be backed up. Everybody's sending Christmas presents and teddy bears and Thanksgiving turkeys and all kind of shit. And you're trying to ship 20 records, especially if you're sending them to different people around the country. Now you got a headache. And you go, you write one check, or if you pay for everything, you write one check for each order. I mean, for uh, you writing one check for all the orders. 
yes, it could be a nightmare because they, they would pick him up from you, pick him up from you, but that was another charge. And you dare not send him overnight. Man, it took eight, seven days. Three to seven days was what the maximum, was the uh, minimum for going across country. So if you, if you send records out on Monday, if they got them by Friday or the following Monday, that was a good day. Damn. That day. And that's why that's why one stops was so so important because what would happen is uh, there'd be a one stop in Texas, one in uh, Louisiana, one in uh, Chicago. So if you sold to those one stops, they can service their area a lot faster. So you send them three, four hundred records. And they would, they can get them to their people a lot faster than you could from California. That was the beauty of that game. That was the independent game. That's why they had the independent one stops because they you can ship three hundred over here, three hundred over here. And if records start picking picking up, you, you you if the guy in Texas run out of records faster, shit, and and they ain't moving to Arizona, you'd have him shoot shoot him to Arizona, take him off his bill. Oh, it was a game, dog. It was a serious game. It was a serious wow. game. So now that sounds fun. I do it. I'm telling you, it was it was oh man, it was it was fun, dude. It was really fun. It was a lot different. It was um, it kept you on your toes. You kept you creative. Um, because you you know you 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 had you you was doing things, man. It, you know, I tell anybody, man, I used to get could, I get excited when I had a new record come out. I, I got something to do. I get up in the morning. I, the record just left the studio. We take the masters down to the to the uh, to the platers. My man Phil. And he would cut the, cut the, uh, the 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 black lacquer the uh, the lacquer take that lacquer down to the um, to Greg's over in Gardena, uh, he drop it off to him give him a, give him a check he turned it into a mother and the stampers take the mother and the stampers down to Bill Smith or McCullough, depending where your where your where your uh, pressing plant is and three, two or three days depending on how busy they were you got a test pressing go to everybody had a, had a stereo in their um, in their uh, in their office. Check it out for pops and cracks. And if the shit was cool, you would, hey, give me my order. You call JDC, you call um, JDC, you call Associated, you call uh, Cletus. Hey, man, I got a new record coming out. All right, I'll, I'll call Steve Yano, rest his soul. Steve, I got a new one coming out Friday. Give me 500. JDC, give me 300. Cletus, give me 500. Like that, dude. And the record ain't even dropped yet. It ain't even dropped yet. You take them, you take them a test pressing. Hey man, this, this is my test press, my new product. All right, I take 500. I take 300. Just like it was just like the stock market, dude. And it was it was beautiful, man. So when, by the time you press up 1500 records, 1200 is gone. You press up 1500 okay. to fill them initial orders, and they fit and they're already gone. The pressing man, pressing plan paid, you made your money, and man, shit, dude, it'd be a good week. I, 